world, welcome back to another Seesaw CTF 2022 write-up video. In this video, we'll be walking through the web challenge World Wide Web. Let's get into it. Isn't the World Wide Web a fascinating place to be in? Words, so many words, all linked. Note, the flag doesn't have a wrapper, it needs to be wrapped with curly brackets and please put CTF in front of the curly brackets. Okay, so they actually changed it. It is in the proper flag format, which helps us with our solution, as you'll see here in a little bit. Anyways, let's open up the link and you'll notice it says, please help me find my missing stuff. And if you open up the cookies, you'll notice there's a soul chain cookie that starts with stuff. And actually I need to refresh this. Like so if you click stuff, then it creates the soul chain cookie. And then it says stuff. Now, you'll notice that there's a bunch of just what looks like hyperlinks here. But if you go to the source, you'll notice that they're just a bunch of a hyperlinks without the actual link, right? There's no link associated with these. So they're just highlightable and clickable, but they don't do anything. That being said, if you were to say, throw one of these words in front of it, like flow, we'll take that first word there. You'll notice it'll reload with a bunch of new random words. And if you look at the cookies, it'll say stuff flow. Now, if you were to do something like brown, you can just keep doing this, right? And it, it'll just come back with more and more random characters and it'll build up this soul chain cookie. Well, we need to figure out what the actual path is because all these A links are actually kind of like red herrings in a way. We need to figure out which one of these words will take us to the proper path and we need to build the cookie appropriately so that it reflects that. And then eventually we'll get to the point where we get to a URL with our fully pathed out cookie and it'll have the flag in it. And so that's what I did here over in this script. And I'll explain that in just a second, but I wanna go over real quick what this beautiful soup library I'm using in Python is. I don't know how long this library has been around, but uh, somebody showed it to me when they were helping me solve this challenge and this is what they use to solve it. And it's actually really nifty because it kind of streamlines a lot of the work you would need to get certain HTML objects from the source code of a website. So as you can see, I import the library and also the request library. And what I do is I get the base URL. I get a you know general request for it. This is the starting request, right? This is if you didn't have anything attached to the challenge and you're going immediately into stuff. Then soup, as you can see here, they use soup as the variable for kind of like the inner HTML or the source code of the HTML. Soup is calling the beautiful soup class, which is basically taking the text and putting it into an HTML parser so that you can call different soup, I guess, classes and functions that are associated with the beautiful soup library. It just helps you pull out like objects and stuff. As you can see here, we can pull out the .a objects or find all the A objects, et cetera, et cetera, which is what we want to do, right? Because that's what's in our challenge source code. So that being said, let's take a look at the script closer. And we're going to say for link in soup.findAllA. So we're going to find all the A refs, right? So we're going to find all these. We're going to get it as a link and we're going to pin it to our array. And now, since we have to do a starting one because it's the stuff one, right? So this gets stuff and then we're gonna loop and get the rest of them. So we do while true, and then we get the URL and we get the last index of our paths array that we defined here, or paths list that we defined here. And this is important, we set cookies equal to cookies because we wanna make sure that we have the cookies each time. And then we do soup equals beautiful soup, and then we do, you know, we get the inner HTML again. Then we check to see if CTF is in the request text, then print the request text, which should be our flag or the source that contains our flag. And we put that there because we wanna have this check every time we grab a new source code for the path, right? Or a new request. We wanna check that every time we get a new request. But here we do another for link in soup.findall and that's where we get the A's of course here. And remember this one's getting the first one and then we're getting the rest of them here. The first one from stuff anyways, or the stuff URL that we originally click on. And we're going to say path equals link.gethref. So that's going to say, you know, our path is going to be equal to link.gethref. And if it comes back with something, then it's going to say slash whatever the word is. So if flow comes back positive, like it has 
valid source code data in it, then it's going to say slash flow. But if it doesn't come back with anything, and then it's going to return none. And so if we here we simply check if the path is none, which is, you know, looping through all those A's, if it's not none, then we're going to say cookies equals request.cookies because remember our cookies update every time we go to a new URL. And so we got to update the cookies. I print the cookies here just so you can see how it runs and operates and how it kind of stacks up as we go along. And then we do pass.append pass. And of course I print the pass here and then we break if that's the case, because we don't want to keep looping through all the A's. Once we find a valid one, we want to move on to the next iteration of the loop and try the new path out to get new A's to then try the next path and so on and so forth. And that's why we have this if condition here, which breaks out of this overarching while loop so that once we get the flag, it just exits the program essentially. So that's being said, let's go ahead and just maximize this real quick and we'll go ahead and run solve.py. As you can see, our cookies and paths are slowly stacking up. You see stuff is the first item, obviously. And then, you know, as you can see, the percent twenties are spaces. So the cookies are not separated by slashes. They're separated by spaces or the cookie ver ver or the cookie values are separated by spaces anyways. And we'll just let that run. It will take it a little bit here because it is quite a few paths but eventually it will finish should be almost done and there we go we get ctf words are amazing right and that will be our flag so let's go ahead and paste that in and submit all right, if you enjoyed the video, drop a like and subscribe to the channel to show your support. Turn on post notifications to get regular injections of cyber content directly into your feed. Check out our Patreon, join our Discord, and follow us on Twitter. Links in the description box down below. And leave any feedback or questions in the comments section down below. This is Almond Milk. Thanks for watching. Goodbye, world.